This is episode number 473 of the Health and Fitness Podcast brought to you by Inner Fight in association with Smith Street Paleo. Hop over to smithstreetpaleo.com. Check out all the yummy food that you can have delivered to you on a daily basis. Or why not just order yourself some of the premix bread or premix pancake waffle mix? Go on, treat yourself for the weekend. Smithstreetpaleo.com. Our loyal show sponsors. Folks, welcome back to another of our weekly update shows. You may have not heard his voice yet, and you will not hear my co-host's voice again today. Andre, our schedules do not collide this week, so you've got me for another week of updates, but I've actually really been enjoying the show, punching out and letting you guys know exactly what has been going on in the week gone by, and also what's important to look out for in the week to come. So we're going to jump right into that in today's show as well. Something that's happening over the weekend is the Wadi B run. We have four teams in this. All the guys are up there. We actually have some individuals in it as well. We have a ladies team, we have a men's team, and I believe that Matt Jones has bought Andrew Savage a very special new running outfit. I think they've got matching new running outfits, so I can't wait to see all of the pictures from the Wadi B race on Sunday when they get back. But that is an incredible race. Rob Jones is racing that race as an individual, 70 kilometers. Agbert, one of our new Athletes in the running academy is training for Marathon de Sable 2019. He is doing his first 35K race up there. And as I said, a lot of other guys in a team. And also what's absolutely awesome is we have a ladies only team going up there, which is Tina, Marianne, Faye, and my sister Claire. And I think they're only going to be a four, which is quite good. So it's quite a cool format as well. You can run. Four, five, I think it's 5K, 4 or 5K, and then you hop in the car and someone else takes over. So it's like a relay race. So please look out for all of the pictures and all of the chat about that. Other stuff that is going on this weekend or will have gone on by the time this show wraps up or comes out to you on Sunday is the Endurance Winter Training Camp. They've just got three weeks now before the Bahrain 70.3. Those guys are all up at Jebel Hafit this weekend having an endurance training camp. If you want to know more about the endurance training camps or endurance training full stop, drop them an email, endurance.inafight.com. They'd love to hear from you and explain exactly what goes on there. But a weekend on a mountain with a bicycle, some running shoes, and a Speedo. What can go wrong? Absolutely nothing. It's going to be an absolutely brilliant weekend. Flipping back to last weekend, we had two quite big events going on. It was the Battle of the East up in Kuwait, where we sent a team and a couple of individuals. The big news is is that the team, they reached the semifinals, did super, super well. So hats off to those guys, Abdullah, Abdullah, and Amar. They really had a good time up there and did really well. And some great performances as well from Omar and Salem. So that was up at the Battle of the East in Kuwait, Kuwait's premier CrossFit tournament. And we've had some good representation there every single year since it's been going so good to see that competition going strong as well as you may know last week Andre wasn't with me on the show he was away at the German throwdown and I'm looking forward to catching up with him in next Thursday's show where we're going to have a little bit more of an informal chat Q&A a little bit of focus on nutrition as well hopefully there but Andre was on the German throwdown floor and doing very well he finished up in fourth position last th- uh, last weekend over in Germany. So that's a great result for him. Obviously, I think he's not fully happy coming forth. He wanted to be on the podium or better, and we will get his thoughts as we get him back on the show. Hopefully, we'll record next Thursday's show together and we can get things back to normal. What to look out for in this week? Well, this coming week, folks, in the class program, we have our testing week back. This is something that we've been running sort of every three to four months now for a couple of years gives you a chance to test all areas of your fitness within the class program. So it's going to be super interesting this week as well. All the classes have a nice gymnastics test in them. They have a strength test in them and they also have a conditioning test in them. So I'm not really going to pick a specific 
workout of the week for the coming week. However, it is testing week, so it's going to be different for different people on different days. That's absolutely for sure. And I'm just looking forward to seeing people being able to measure their fitness compared to where they are, as I, where they were and now where they are. As I said, we have gymnastics tests in there, strength tests and conditioning tests pretty much every single day day and just a note if you do come to the classes please note that there is no gymnastics or weightlifting class this week because of testing week so don't turn up ready to do gymnastics you're going to jump into the test and you've got all the chances in the world please don't forget we're now as we have been doing all throughout october and now into november running a class 8 30 on a monday and a wednesday as well so every single day now during the week sunday to thursday we have that 8 30 class for you guys so that's something that you might want to hop into if you don't go to work very early or skip work no anyway testing week is next week update on dubai fitness challenge how are we doing folks this super cool initiative with the Dubai Tourism, with the Dubai Government, from His Highness Sheikh Hamdan, the Crown Prince of the country, where he has challenged all of Dubai residents. And if you're not from Dubai, this is a great concept. And you can actually get involved from overseas as well if you download the Dubai Fitness app, which you can do simply on any platform, whether it's Android or whether it's iOS, and you can get involved in the Dubai Fitness Challenge doing 30 minutes, just 30 minutes of exercise a day for 30 days. You can log it in there. You can create leaderboards. You can go in and you can have a look at the Inner Fight leaderboard and you can see where you stand on that if if that kind of competition motivates you, which I know it does for a lot of people, not everyone, but a lot of people. The coolest thing as well is if you're an endurance athlete, your Strava feeds directly into the feature on on the app the strava is a, is a feature of the app and it feeds directly into that so you can see exactly what is going on and how much you have moved as those of you that have been following my journey have seen i've taken up a challenge to run 30 marathons in 30 days one marathon a day and on recording of this i'm actually just going to bed after i've recorded this for a few hours nap yes it's the middle of the day that's all right I well, I will have done, uh, when this has been recorded, I've done 14. By the time you've listened to it, I would have passed the halfway mark and I will be on number, or done number 16, waiting to do number 17. So that's my journey at the moment, one marathon a day for the 30 days. And I just want to use the rest of this show to answer some of the questions. I think you guys that have listened to the show have been sending them in and a lot of people have asked some really it, for me, quite interesting questions, and I think these questions could help a lot of people. I know you're all into health, fitness, getting the best out of your bodies. So I'm going to answer some of the most commonly asked questions that I've been getting so that hopefully you guys can benefit from it. One of the questions, I'll kick it straight off. One of the questions that I get asked the most is, what do you do to recover from day to day? And this one is actually super important because I need to be ready to go the next morning. I start at five o'clock every single morning, so I need to be ready to go, and I'm finishing finishing mid-morning, so I don't really have too much time to recover. So what I do simply is as soon as I finish, and it, I'll start from the finish, and then I'll explain what it's like actually during the run, because nutrition during the run is something super important. I will eat breakfast. I'll speak a little bit in a second about my food, but I will go and once I've had breakfast, I'll sit in a bath of Epsom salts, which is magnesium based for about 30 to 40 minutes. After I've got out of that, I'll then eat again all the time drinking a lot. I'll aim to drink about 3.5 to 4 liters once I've after during the day after the run and I'll have around 1.5 liters right directly as soon as I finish just to get the hydration going. I'll then do a little bit of work, which I'm actually doing right now. Yes, this is classed as work. Then I will often, or two days a week, sorry, two to three days a week, I go and see the girls at DISC, Tamara and Lizzie, who just do some light massage just to try and drain out anything that's in my legs. I'm not sure what's actually left in my legs, but that actually feels a lot better. I'll sometimes try and have a sleep like I'm going to do after this show. Although, as I think so far, I've only had three afternoon naps, so I don't really need that many of those. I've done it on on a needs basis. Today, I'm feeling a little bit tired, but not every day I feel that I need an afternoon nap, so I don't have one. I don't force myself to have one. 
And then I will eat a another meal in the afternoon, and then dinner is of a reasonable size as well. One thing on my food, folks, my food is still all paleo from Holly. So those of you that are on the meal plan, as I spoke about at the start of the show, it works. It's very good. Obviously, have a lot more food than is on the meal plan. and probably have double the amount of food than you would get on the meal plan. So that d- dishes up to me around five to 6,000 calories. So let's try how I try and recover food and during the day wise. Then my other main recovery tool is obviously sleep where I will go to bed at around 7.30 to 8 o'clock and I'm making sure that I get eight hours sleep during the night. I'm up at 4, 4.20 depends where I have to start. Sometimes I just roll out of my house. So 4.30 is fine for that. 30 minutes in the morning just to get things moving, get everything ready. And But I'm making sure every single day I'm getting eight hours sleep. And I think that's really been a key to my recovery. Nutrition wise, I've spoken a little bit about what food I eat during the day. Whilst I'm running, I have a really simple strategy where I will have in the first hour, at the end of the first hour, I'll have a nut butter. Calories wise, that gives me about 200 calories. At the end of the second hour, I'll have a Smith Street treat, so something like a coconut rough bar or maybe two of the balls, cinnamon balls, brownie balls, hazelnut balls. I'll have that at the end of the second hour. At the end of the third hour, I actually use something called a goose droop waffle, which is just something a little bit texturally different, and it's got a little bit of higher content of carbohydrate in it. And then with about 5 to 10K to go, if I feel I need it, I always carry with me some bonk breaker chews, which are a mixture of basically sugar and also caffeine. That gets me through. Hydration-wise, during the run, this is something that's super important. Although I'm not always incredibly thirsty, I'll make sure I'm getting a minimum of 500, probably more like 750 mils of water per hour during the run. That's something that's super important for my recovery throughout the day. So I don't, I want to finish the run as hydrated as possible. I don't want to be trying to chase my tail throughout the day to try and hydrate. So that's what a lot of people have been asking me about hydration. That's something that is really important to me as well. So I really try and nail it during the run, even though I don't feel thirsty. Some people have been asking me about weight change. You should check out my Insta story. I'm posting pictures of my weight every week on a Friday and any physical changes so far after one week there hasn't been any we'll test them again tomorrow and i'll post them up as well a lot of people also are asking about how long it takes me to do it what's my pace that i'm running at i've generally hit around the 415 to 420 4 hours 15 4 hours 20 for the marathon when we stop to refill with water or we get stuck at traffic lights or something i will stop my watch so the total time for the marathon could be a little bit longer, but that's the running time, which drops in at around the six minutes per kilometer pace. So it's a pace that anyone really can run. And we've had some incredible people that have been running a lot more than they've ever run before. So far, we've got 11 people who have done their first marathon with me. So that's something that's, oh, sorry, 11 people have completed the full marathon. And I think four people that, have completed a marathon for the first time and i'm just actually getting some messages as i record this of people who are teeing up to come and run with me next week so anyone can run with me you're all super welcome whether it's 5k 10k i put the route on my instagram story the day before i'm gonna run it so i'll put it there the night before around six or seven o'clock so that's where you need to be checking that route out if you want to come and run most days i think all the days now until the last weekend, which I'll speak about in next show, I'll start at the flagpole just down at the end of Beach Road. It's very close to my house, so it's convenient. We start at 5 a.m. And if you can't join early morning, you can join later. That would be absolutely great. We've run some awesome, awesome routes, and we're going to go another couple of times into the old city over through Burdibai, through Deera. It's almost like a tourist excursion, and those of you that follow my Instagram We'll know about that as well. So the final question that I have, people are asking me what my heart rate is doing. Waking heart rate is actually 10 beats higher and it's a steady 10 beats higher all the time and my heart rate variability is down. However, when I'm running, my average heart rate across the four hours or so, the 42.2 kilometers, 
Today, I think it was 110, so it's very, very low. I'm going to run at about 5.45, 6 minutes a K, and I'm only giving out around... Today, I was at that speed, and I was giving out around 106 to 108 average heartbeats, so my heart is incredibly low for that. Um, we'll dig into that a little bit more in, in a show, sort of when we have a post-mortem of the whole thing, but that's really what I want to say about that. They're, they're the most asked questions from my... 30 30 challenge so far i just really hope you guys are involved in a 30 30 challenge as well and speaking of which an event and i've left this event to the last minute here is that next weekend on saturday 17th we will be having a beach event a beach workout at serenia on the palm and that is where i will finish my marathon that day which will take me into the last week week. So once I've done that, I think I have seven or six to go. So it's going to be an excellent day. But honestly, folks, thank you for everyone that sent me a message with regards to my marathon challenge. It's getting pretty interesting now. We're 14 in, 16 when the show comes out. By the time I next catch up to you, we'll only have a week to go. So that's going to be absolutely awesome. If you haven't already checked out our show from Thursday, Podcast 472, please go and do that. Brian Falchuk, super Super interesting guy and a very interesting perspective. His do a day, as he calls it. I know I've spoken about that before. We managed to get him on the show. It was a really interesting chat we had with him. So please go and check it out. I think that's it for show 473. That's all the updates. Thanks a lot for tuning in, folks, as always. And until next time, take care. <laughs>